Hello, it's Keith here, and today I wanted to show you some highlights of a video I did recently for my patrons, where I opened up an MSX, WSX, and I fixed the floppy disk drive. Now, the floppy disk drives on these machines have a drive belt, and over time that drive belt wears out. So quite often when you buy a broken MSX, the only problem with it is the belt needs replacing, and fortunately it's relatively easy to do. Now, it does depend a bit on the machine. If you've not got a WSX, then the repair mechanism is slightly different sometimes, but I thought I'd show you the basics for this machine at least, because if you're looking to buy an MSX, then the WSX is one of the best reasonably priced ones you can get. So we'll have a look at it today. Now, the first thing of course is to open the machine and then you need to actually remove the drive unit. You need to be careful when you remove the data cable because the data cable can be accidentally reversed. However, it's not just data lines, it's also power lines. If you reverse the cable accidentally, you will send power through the wrong parts and you will damage not just the floppy drive, but possibly also the controller in the MSX. So make sure you are very aware of what way it was inserted into the floppy drive when you remove it. So you put it back in the same way when you replace the drive. Once you've removed the drive, you need to check the underside and have a look at it. At this point, you need to check online if your drive map doesn't match the one I'm showing here. You need to look for a repair guide because the method will differ. On this drive, what we need to do is we need to remove the sensor unit. This detects the position of the rotating mechanism. Now, I say on this drive because on some of them, removing this mechanism will actually render the drive completely permanently broken. That's the A1F. On the A1F, you actually need to desolder part of the drive to be able to put the new belt on rather than unscrewing the unit. But with the WSX, we can safely remove the unit. Next, what we need to do is we need to clean any gunk off the drive which is remaining from the old belt because it will have probably turned to rubber. I used isopropyl alcohol, cotton and wool buds and um, a small screwdriver to scrape off the remains from the drive. We need to make sure everything's nice and clean for the new belt. Now all we need to do is move that unit slightly out of the way, find a new replacement belt and then we will be okay. Once everything's ready, we now put the new belt in place. I have a set of belts that I use. You can use a, um, a thin belt or a square belt. Sometimes you can use a belt that's designed for a cassette tape. But um, basically, I have a, a variety of them and I just try to see which one fits. So you need to find a belt that will fit your drive. And then once you've got a belt that seems nice and tight, then you just need to test it. So obviously the best thing to do is to power it on with the case still open. You just need to put a floppy disk in and then test to see if you can read from the floppy disk. If you can't, then your next stage is to use a head cleaning kit or um, if you can't get a floppy disk cleaning kit, then some isopropyl alcohol wiped carefully onto the heads of the, the floppy disk is also possible, but the, the cleaning kits I've got were just about $5, so I would suggest those. It's much easier and much safer. But anyway, in this case, all I needed to do was replace that belt and um, the, the machine worked fine. And to be honest, in most cases, that's what happens. So I would definitely recommend this as something to look at if you want to get a cheap MSX and get it into full working order. If you're unable to get your floppy drive working, then your next solution should be to get an SD card emulator like the Mega Flash ROM SCC Plus. That's a great emulator that will emulate a floppy disk drive. So if your floppy disk repair fails, you know, the heads are actually faulty as well or something, or you just don't have the confidence to do this work, that's the next solution for you. Anyway, either way, you should end up with a fully working MSX and um, it, that's a great way to get you started with the MSX too. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. If you want to see the full teardown video, please subscribe to my Patreon. The reason I'm only putting them for the patrons is because I actually appear on camera. I'm not too much of a fan of that, so I, I'm showing the repair side as a sort of free thing on my YouTube. But if you want to see me on camera working on the machine, then that's a Patreon only thing. Anyway, thanks for watching today and goodbye.